Hi. Now, suppose we have a table or a scatter diagram of bivariate data for a population of observations. We could calculate the population product moment correlation coefficient rho. I'll generally call it PMCC for short in this tutorial. However, suppose we don't have this data at hand, the population data. And I need to calculate the likelihood of that population parameter rho being equal to zero or possibly a value greater than zero or even less than zero. How do I do it? Well, what I would normally do is take a sample from the population. Here I've got a sample of five values. So I would let n, the number of values in the sample, be equal to 5. And if I was to work out the sample PMCC for this, which is given by R, it would turn out to be 0 0.78. You can check that on your calculator if you wish. And this is given to two decimal places. I've also kept the observations here as integer values. I'm sure they wouldn't be in reality. They'll be decimals. And by taking the sample PMCC, we can run a significance test on this value to check the likelihood that the population PMCC row is a positive value, greater than zero. It might, however, be that I take a sample from the population. Let's say we take a sample of six values. I haven't actually written the values in here. But let's just say that the sample PMCCR is a negative value, minus 0 0.83 in this case. We could test to see what the likelihood would be of getting a population PMCC row being less than zero. And I could have, say, a sample of eight values, where in this example, the sample PMCC is 0.75. But I'll be doing a slightly different test here, as you'll see later. So when we're testing the population product moment correlation coefficient rho, we need to set up a null hypothesis given by h0. And that is that that coefficient rho is equal to zero in each case. There's no linear correlation. Now, if we turn to the first example, we need an alternative hypothesis. We've seen that the sample PMCC is 0 0.78, a positive value. So the alternative hypothesis would be to test to see whether rho was greater than zero, a positive value. And this is given by H1, the alternative hypothesis, rho is greater than zero. And similarly, in this situation here, where the sample PMCC R was a negative value, our alternative hypothesis would be to test that rho was less than zero. Now in this last table, I want to demonstrate a different type of alternative hypothesis, and that is that the population PMCC rho is not equal to zero rather than, say, being greater than zero, given this result. So we'll take each one of these examples in turn. So again, how do we test for rho? Well, I'm going to be looking at the first example here, and it's best to just take a diagram like this to explain this. I've got this number line here, where we've got rho equaling zero, and if it's perfect linear positive correlation, remember rho would be 1. And what we're going to be doing here is called a one-tail test for a significance level alpha, which for a given sample size gives us a critical value, that's this CV here, which defines a critical region. And if R is greater than that critical value, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there's evidence to suggest that rho is greater than zero at the significance level alpha. 
So how do we get this critical value? Well, we get it from tables. And I've given an extract from a set of tables here. You'll find them generally at the back of your statistics textbook, or you'll be given a set of tables in a formula book at your exam. And you'll see that in this column here, we've given the sample sizes n. And across the top here, in the level row, we've got various decimals which represent percentages. Here we've got 10%, 5%, 2.5%, 1%, and half a percent. And underneath each of these levels, you'll see that we've got a set of values. And these are the critical values for various sample sizes at a certain percentage significance levels. So let's continue with this example here. Let's set a significance level at 5%. And we call this a one-tailed test because we're testing the alternative hypothesis for greater than zero. It's also a one-tailed test when we're doing less than zero. And this type of example will be a two-tailed test when it's not equal to zero. So more about that, as I say, later on. So to get the critical value for this example, what we need to do is look down the sample size column here, n, for our sample size of 5. And we're testing at the 5% level, so that is the decimal 0.05. We look under this column until we're matching up along this row here with the 5, and you can see that the decimal that we've got is 0.8054. And that is our critical value, value here. And we can see that since r equals 0 0.78, and it's less than that critical value, we accept the null hypothesis. And we conclude then that there is evidence to suggest there is no linear correlation between x and y at the 5% level of significance. Also notice how we use the words to suggest, because we can't be totally sure that we've made the correct decision. Remember, it's only based on a sample size of 5 and this value here of 0 0.78. A larger sample would be a better test, and if we took lots of samples as well, would strengthen the test. Now in the second example, we have to take a little bit more care when it comes to using the tables, as I'll show you. Again, what we'll do is we'll just have a look at this diagram here, which will give us a visual interpretation of what we're trying to achieve. Again, we've got the number line with row equaling zero here, and at the other extreme, remember, row could equal minus 1 to represent perfect negative linear correlation in the population. And in this instance, we've got our critical region for a particular significance level alpha, which would determine a given critical value. And we would reject the null hypothesis this time if R turns out to be less than the critical value in this region here. So let's test at another significance level. Let's say we test at the 10% level. And again, remember, it's a one-tailed test. So we need to find that critical value from the tables. So we've got n equals 6, so our sample size is 6. We're looking at the significance level of 10%, and that is the 0 0.10 here. And if we look down the column with the row here, you can see that it is 0 0.6084. But hold on a minute, that doesn't look right. We've got a negative value here. It's to the left of row equaling zero. And so you've got to be careful. Although it says 0 0.6084, we put a negative sign in front of it. So take care on that. 
it's not 0.6084, it's negative 0.6084. And so we can see that since r, which equals minus 0.83, is less than minus 0.6084, that critical value, it clearly is on the left of the critical value and we therefore reject the null hypothesis. So that would lead us to conclude that there is evidence to suggest again that there is negative linear correlation between x and y at the 10% level of significance. Okay, well this brings us now finally to this last test, which is again slightly different from the ones that we've carried out here as you'll see. I said to you it's a two-tailed test and we're going to demonstrate this by taking a significance level of 5%. So why is it a two-tailed test? What makes it different? Well if we take this diagram here we have two tails if you like. This is the lower tail, this is called the upper tail and we have two critical regions and two critical values which are placed at equal distance from zero. But notice that these critical regions take on a value for half the significance level that I quote up here. So if we're looking for the critical values that we've got in this chart, I'll look in the tables under n equals 8, so that's that value there, and our percentage level is not 5% but half of that, 2.5%, so that's that decimal 0.025. Coming down the column here, matching it up with the row, you can see we've got this value here of 0.7067. And that would correspond to this critical value here, but because they're equally displaced from the zero, this critical value must be minus 0.7067. So we've got our critical values as being plus or minus 0.7067. And we can take our value here of 0.75 and we can see that since it is greater than 0.7067, we reject the null hypothesis. So what we have here then is that there is evidence to suggest there is a linear correlation between x and y at the 2.5% level of significance. Now I've summarised what we've done in these three examples in this table here. For the first test I was testing whether rho was greater than zero. It was a one-tailed test and I rejected the null hypothesis if the sample PMCCR was greater than the critical value for a significance level alpha. Similarly, in the next test, the second example, I tested whether rho was less than zero. That too was a one-tailed test and I rejected the null hypothesis if r was less than the critical value for a significance level alpha. And finally, in the last example, I tested that rho didn't equal zero and that was a two-tailed test and I rejected the null hypothesis if r was less than the critical value or greater than the critical value for half the original significance level. And so I hope that's been of some use to you. So bye for now and thanks for watching.